Well, here we are. Welcome, we are. everybody. This is like the, I don't know, I don't know what this is, but these are like some of my favorite people in the world, and I'm just happy to be here tonight. It's uh, it's Friday night, and I can't think of a cooler way to end the week than um, chatting with Melissa Pilikowski, Audra Thornberry, Kelly Coons, Dave Blanchard, and Claudio Zavala Jr. See how I said your name real slow, Ooh. Claudio, like a real announcer. Yeah. What is up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Um, how is everybody doing? How was everybody's week? <laughs> it's Friday. Yeah. Friday. 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 As Mark Otter, who's uh, <clears throat> either not either watching or will be watching soon, <clears throat> he inevitably always he can't go through a Friday without saying Friday at least once because <laughs> he he he's obsessed with dad jokes uh, and they're great. <laughs> <laughs> Claudio knows Mark. I don't know if any else reminds you know Mark personally, but uh, yeah. Anyways, it's really funny. Yeah, Friday. So, who wants to tell a fun story? Has anyone got anything going? Hey, it's the last day of school in Nebraska. In our district, I say that like it means. I say that like it means anything. I say that like it means something. It doesn't mean anything. Well, to, uh, we handed out diplomas Tuesday, uh, so they're signed, but we had to do that, so then that way they're going to do a little video, and then they send them all, we put everything together into one video, and so 4 o'clock next Saturday, which is supposed to be when our graduation was supposed to be, then the video gets debuted, and so our speakers will still give their speeches and it will still be really grand but yeah that's yeah we had to give out diplomas really early this year just to make all that happen crazy anyone else got anything going on today was graduation day for St. Cloud State we uh didn't really it didn't feel like we did anything. And, and uh, it was so weird because we had a, a video from our, our great president of the university. And then it was like individual, random, different ways of supporting our students. But the School of Ed did a really interesting video where um, we actually borrowed a lot of the, the same type of feel that schools did in like the We Miss You collages where mm -hmm. um, different teachers do it. And we did a congrats collage video um, yeah. honoring Ooh. everybody in our undergrad program, graduating our graduate and then our doc program. Um, so it was definitely a different, a different feel. And then we also announced the date um, in August when we are saying that we're going to have our real commencement but we'll see about that. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm fingers crossed. Fun this, is my first, you, Dave. this is my first class. So these yeah. are my first mm -hmm. students who are graduating. So let me tell you, let me tell you, Dave, my last group of seniors that I ever taught graduated from St. Cloud State today. So yeah. like, my last group was your first group. That that is crazy. Oh yeah. well Look then my, that. my my first group of third graders graduates this year too. And it's just like so crazy. Mm -hmm. Trying to think of my what grade my first like grade twos would be in now. <laughs> uh, I don't want to think about it. Yeah. yeah. And I always feel really old when I'm doing the math right my now. kids graduate from college, but I have to remember I had them when they were like juniors and seniors. So they weren't in elementary when they were when I had them. I think about the first seniors I ever taught right off, right out of college, and they'd be like 36, and I realized how ridiculous it was that I was only five years older than them, and yeah. I, they, they entrusted <laughs> me with their education. <laughs> That's doing, awesome. doing the math in my head, I think... The very first group of kids that I taught, they're probably way after, you know, whoever went to college has already graduated. I think a while back, I had one of my students contact me. You were one of my favorite teachers. I'm enjoying life. I have my husband and a kid and I'm a hairstylist. And I was like, wow, like it was pretty cool. At the same time, I was like, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> 
So at, listen, as always, uh, folks, if you're watching, uh, feel free to. Uh, the cool thing about having something like this on Twitch is that you can literally just put a chat, uh, uh, put a comment in the chat, ask a question, weigh in on whatever the heck it is what we're talking about, even if it's nonsense. Uh, and and um, we'll, you know, it can it, we can bring it up on the screen, but we can uh, just make a comment. Uh, we're streaming on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch today. Today. So there's uh, no. lots, of, lots of places to consume <laughs> these beautiful faces. Um, that's that sounded very zombie like. Um, we also <laughs> we also have we we have questions. We um, we come prepared, mm-hmm. friends, uh, to talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a great podcast this week. Mm-hmm. At least I mm-hmm. think so. I don't know. I might be a little biased, I suppose. Um, but we um, we generally um, love using this time to kind of dig a little deeper into what it is that we talked about on the pod um, and share some ideas and thoughts and and get everyone else uh, give everyone else a chance to weigh in. Um, and hey, before we get started, we need to like stop and welcome Kelly Coons. Oh my God. Our little group. And she Bring was the up. one who uh, kind of spearheaded the questions tonight. So Kelly, thank you. You are first, awesome. First blog post today for yeah, Kelly. Yeah. It's a big welcome. week for her. It's a, it was a big oh, week. It's been a big week. That, that's for sure. But it was, um, I mean, it's it, it's easy to do when you have good material to do it on. So, oh. um, so that made my yeah. job a lot easier. Awesome. Well, this is, I, I'm, it's funny when, when I started talking to Kelly and Audrey and Diana, actually, uh, I should say, uh, Diana Myers McGee, uh, who was on the chat last week mm-hmm. and um, is, is going to be kind of like our resident editorial blogger i guess for lack of better ways to explain what she's going to be doing but let me tell you the blog post that she wrote like i got i got Mm -hmm. shivers reading it it was so well written Mm -hmm. uh and it was exactly like we we always talk about the blog when people ask me uh especially guest writers i i say and and i probably would have said this to audrey and i've said this to other people when they've guest written is to raise the bar not lower it we don't you know, a lot of what we do, I'll admit, on the podcast is it definitely delves into like the edutainment type world. Um, but on the blog, I wanted it to be smart. I wanted it to make you think. I wanted it to be thought provoking. And um, I, I I love our blog. Um, you know, it's it's small but mighty. Uh, so um, pretty excited about everything that's going on. And look at look at the people. Like we have. We have a team of, you know, even with the extended folks like Claudio and Andy Lizer, who hasn't joined us yet. But uh, when you when you add all those folks together, my God, we're we're what are we? Seven, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Yeah, because there's that Glenn guy, too. What? There's this guy named Glenn. You make sure you can. Glenn Irvin. Senior Irvin. So uh, tons of people. Uh, and tons of voices and tons of ideas. Um, so great questions this week for the chat on the pod. Uh, we talked about here be dragons. I, I, I loved the analogy. I heard it on someone else's podcast. I'll admit I stole it. I fully acknowledge I stole it. Uh, but it, it totally, it, the history major in me just went crazy thinking about it. Um, and the fact that just, we have no idea. And, and anyone who says they know, is lying to you flat out lying to you um you know uh so you know all we can do is guess and all we can do is use our experience and like there's tons of experience in this chat you know so we can kind of make guesses and thoughts and ideas about what is to come and everyone's we also talked about on the podcast that everyone's going to be different every place it like um you know every state every province every you know, country mm-hmm. has going is going to have to handle this entirely different ways. Um, so I wouldn't mind, you know, um, going around the rim a little bit and kind of giving, getting a sense of your thoughts on, you know, what does education look like going forward? Maybe one or two ideas of what you think is act. What are you going to face even in your job 
that maybe you didn't face or didn't have to face before. There's, there's, oh boy, here be dragons. Who wants to dive into that first? <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so dive right in. Um, and the water's cold, but um, yeah. I, I think that how my job changes is um, I'm a technology coach. And we've had a lot of conversations about planning for next year and what that looks like, even, you know, I mean, we don't know what it's going to look like school wise with the students, but being prepared in a way that we are, um, I guess, fully equipping our teachers with with what they need as far as um, a girl that I spoke to the other day helped a teacher cut um, copy and paste for 45 minutes the other day, which sounds very, very basic. Um, but we're going to have to keep up some type of a video virtual repository that we can arm our teachers with and use as a resource because there are only so many coaches to go around and one-to-one coaching is wonderful, but, but for those on the fly type situations, we're going to have to have more resources. And, um, and then my other idea with that is, we're going to have to involve the parents a little bit more because they play a bigger role, you know, more now than more now than ever before. And so we're, we may need to have some virtual learning parent classes, how to navigate, you know, Google Classroom, Schoology, some of the different platforms and familiarize parents with everything that their students are going to be encountering. So I think I think that's a, a part a place where we can start moving forward. Mm -hmm. um i'll go ahead and jump jump in um i I think for me um we met a while back my coworkers, bosses talking about you know i work year-round so during the summer i'm at the i'm in the office and usually we're doing trainings but this time we're like we're not probably going to be doing any trainings because everyone's at home so uh it was said we're probably going to be working from home during the summer which right. you know this is just becoming the new norm here but as far as like for the year i mean i've heard um there may be some districts just planning on continuing this virtual learning environment and trying to prep for it trying to to get ready for it you know there's i know that manufacturers are they don't have enough devices so if you need if you're needing devices I, you know, this, it's almost like right now trying to buy live streaming equipment. You, you're good luck trying to find all that gear right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, it's going to be interesting um, uh, to say the least. Mm-hmm. We just actually had this conversation um, with our instructional coaches today in our district. And we talked a lot um, about what our new teachers that we're bringing into the district are going to need. We've been working on this huge onboarding project um, for our new teachers. And now a lot of what we've worked on kind of seems obsolete because it's going to be so different. Um, Like for example, I'm in charge of Seesaw for my district. And so I have, you know, all of these trainings for our pre-K going into third grade um, teachers on how to use Seesaw. And now it's, it's different with, with this online learning. And so we're just kind of, you know, trying to navigate, do we do online learning training or do we do more of a blended learning training. Um, And then I also am a huge proponent for making sure we're taking care of our teachers, social and emotional and mental health. And so I think we need to do a lot of training on um, just how do you take care of yourself in this time? I know a lot of my teachers, they call me up and they're just like, Audrey, Mm. (laughs) I hit a brick wall. I cannot do this anymore. And, you know, so I, you know, I have to talk them through this process. And if they are told that in the fall, this is how they're starting the year, my goodness, they are going to need a lot of support emotionally and mentally. So I think a lot of people had to learn a little bit of self-regulation. Oh, yeah. Right. That that like this this was a whole new world and um it meant that you might be well we learned from uh from our friends at Go Guardian that that there are students mm-hmm. and teachers working until like two in the morning. Mm-hmm. And um you know, that's not sustainable. 
newsflash <laughs> that's not sustainable and and so you know it's it's this uh comment in the chat the worst part of this distance learning for me is having trouble shutting off mm -hmm. and um you know as someone that's actually worked in a home office for the better part of the last couple of years uh, i've i've just started to get better at this mm -hmm. um like in the last few months um because i was going non-stop like and i'd be working until 10 or 11 at night most nights and that's like i said it's not sustainable teachers are teachers will burn out mm -hmm. if this continues like if you are out of school in september you will have teachers leave the profession mm -hmm. from burnout because this yeah. is not what they were expecting right yeah. how, that, how do you how do you prepare for that Right. I think oftentimes when you do teach online, you have elected to do that. And in this case, we're all forced to do that, you know, and so the the lack of an opportunity to choose mm -hmm. <laughs> is huge. And um, again, like those new teachers coming into our, <laughs> into our fold, I just we're as teachers, we are people persons, if that's the right way to say it. But, you know, we we thrive on having that connection. Um, I know that the, the thing that I loved most about teaching ELA was being able to sit in a circle with my students and have great discussions about the things that we're reading. And yes, you can still do that online, but it's, it is so different when you're talking to a screen than when you're looking a kid in the eye and they're, you know, telling you something amazing that they connected with in the book that you're, you're reading. Um, and so just not being able to have those same connections is so hard for students as well as teachers. Phil, Phil Pulley in the chat, hard to stop during the day, hard to keep it out of your dreams and thoughts at night. I, I can't tell you how, how true that is. How many of you are dreaming about Zoom chats, uh, you know, and screwing up a, a Zoom chat or whatever it is that you might be doing? Oh, my God. Uh, I actually want to ask Dave. So so um, Claudio said it in the chat. Um, and, and this is kind of Dave's wheelhouse. So, Dave, you know, talk about what teacher training might look like going forward. Like like if this is something yeah. that we have to like provide an eventuality for going forward there's going to be new learning that has to be done for this like this is what we learned from this and this is how you can prepare for it yeah it absolutely happens. it and, happens again and that's the piece where um we're having conversations in that higher ed level around what does learning look like what type of skills need to be taught that are uh, maybe agnostic of format you know like what can we do that you can still foster in person and online um, but one of the pieces where here in at least Minnesota we're tied is the standards for educators won't change for quite some time. Like legislation won't move fast enough. The testing that the, the teacher candidates, the future teachers need to take won't move fast enough to adjust to allow us to do that. So it's really embedding new practices in our courses and really being mindful of demonstrating what we're actually expecting instead of just going, and here's a lecture and here's a lecture. We need to, to lead by doing just the same way in K-12, you know, when you want mm -hmm. your students to do something, you demonstrate it and you live it. And, um, you know, I think that's seen really well in like the PBIS aspect, like you live and breathe it with your students. Um, now in grad school, we get to do things radically different because we don't have the same type of standards that we need to prepare um, people for licensure um, in all of our courses. Uh, so that's where we really get to get creative. And, and I'm not here as a commercial ever, but if you ever want to learn about some amazing things, we've got some stuff in the works that um, is just going to knock some people's socks off. Um, and it's all online anyways. Hashtag it's, it's marketing. Like <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Like everything comes full circle always. And I'm not even saying where I work, but you can find it on my handle on Twitter. You know? uh, but it, it's one of those pieces where we get to be more responsive there. Um, and as we're preparing our new future teachers to go in the field, we also acknowledge that like, I don't teach smart board. I don't teach Promethean board because I don't know what you're going to have. I teach you skills and I demonstrated on this and that. That's radically different. I have other peers across the nation that are like, they teach certain skills on certain platforms. That just makes me 
that makes me queasy um, because it, it doesn't work. Uh, so being able to, to have some fun with it now, I think we're going to see teacher prep continue to evolve. And, and teacher prep was referenced quite a bit in our episode this week. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to remember that everyone in this chat has been out of teacher prep for, for at least 10 years. Yeah. It's different <laughs> than when we went to school. It is, I promise. Mm -hmm. Radically different? Well, that depends on what institution, but it is different and we are meeting the needs differently. Um, you know, get engaged, go back to your university that's local, see what's different, see where you can contribute. People want to hear. And especially now more than ever, we're talking about how do we engage our districts that we work with closely uh, to be able to figure out what does not just next year look like, but what does the future look like? I might be the only mm -hmm. schmuck in this room that doesn't have a master's degree now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but all you, all you smart yeah, people. Yeah, but you're Canadian. And you oh, that, have you have lots of schooling to even be a teacher. Yes, we all way way more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We I have two. Yeah, you have to have two degrees to be a teacher. Um, and and you know now now it's six years. Wow. Um, it, I got in. I got in just uh, a few years before they changed that. Um, but uh, so I I took five and a half years. Um, because I did a couple a bit extra because I'm a master. So that's equivalent to it. That's equivalent to the amount of education. Yeah. You, know, you don't get the fun letters. <clears throat> yeah. Well, well, we're changing that soon. Stay tuned. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I feel like if teachers are the kind of people who should be teachers, want to make a difference, then they will be the ones to rise to the challenge of the distance mm -hmm. learning, regardless of whether or not this is something that they signed up for. I mean, yeah. Um, so good comment there. You know, and we said, we've said this on the podcast, like the idea that um, teachers are, most teachers are pretty exceptional people and passionate about their jobs. And um, we'll, we will, you all, everyone will, will find a way to make things happen we will catch kids up we will overcome learning loss uh all of that will happen i have no doubt um but you know i i think you're naive if you don't acknowledge that there will also be teachers who quit if this yes. continues because well, they, just... they did not sign up for this and that's it's just the way it is well, and I mean, just look at the attrition of teachers right now. If I don't know what the research says of how many of them last past the first three years, if right. some of them are already on the verge, this may just be the last push. And you're looking at older teachers too, maybe teachers who didn't embrace technology as well, who for them, you know, sometimes teachers just need that last reason to just finally go, you know what, times are just too different. I can't do it anymore. And mm -hmm. then at least in the U.S., we do not have that teacher supply coming through colleges to fill in a teacher mass exodus. Mm -hmm. There we go, Dave. I knew Dave had that number. <laughs> that's the kind of that's the kind of quality information that Dave Blanchard is just absolutely good for. Forty. You know, I I, I had to wow. scramble. I had to scramble for like the source and the reputable source. I knew it was over a third and under uh, fifty percent. Wow. Uh, but wow, it, it is it is one of those crazy pieces where now you look at the the reasons why, and there's a lot there. And um, will pandemic educational triage be a factor in that? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it wouldn't be. Um, things are radically different. And if you're not strapping on the boots and, and learning something on your own outside of your district's professional development because you know you need it, you're, you're probably in that percentage that will be on its way out if mm -hmm. this continues more than two years. Mm-hmm. I thought Mike froze. No, I'm looking <laughs> for something because I'm I'm prepping a hot take, friends. Ooh. I'm prepping a hot 
well, take the next like, question. While you do that, on your I, oven mitts. Well, while you're doing oven. that, so yeah, you know, uh, I post, I shared this, um, you know, so we all these new teachers that are coming in. So you think the, the, those that are need that extra, or I wouldn't say need that, but maybe the, oh, I finally had it. This is it. I'm. I was only like two years away from retiring. I'm done now. But those that are coming in that are, we always make the insub- assumption that because they're younger, for the most part, that they're tech savvy. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've, not- I've worked with new teachers and, um, and I asked people that work in university, I said, are you guys doing anything in the university? And I'm speaking the ones here where you're showing them, you know, teaching them any, some sort of digital tools to be able to embed it with, you know, in a lesson or something like that. And they're like, no, we never were taught something like this. I'm like, well, I'm like, it's interesting. So why, I wonder why, why they don't. It's just curiosity. Because they didn't have Dave Blanchard for. Because <laughs> it's not on the test. It's because the so, many, so many, yeah, so many um, people focus on um, tech on top mm-hmm. where you can, you can just do it on a smart board. Here, here's some iPads. Who's got the, the Google cardboard things? Let's go on a field trip. Like all that's flash in the pan, buzzy fun, but it's not pedagogically sound, you know, and I'm not discrediting going on a VR expedition. Like there's so much awesome, but when it's done that way, and, and sometimes that's what our new teachers feel comfortable with because they did have the survey of here's 12 tools in four weeks where you're going to learn just enough about everything um, to be dangerous mm-hmm. and not, not mm-hmm. understand if you introduce it this way, you're leading them down a bat. Like you're, you're leading them down scratches made for video for, for cartoons. You, like, you, and, Eric, so you and Eric Colenz would be good friends. Well, and something else to <laughs> think about is, is when those teachers, when new teachers come out of their college education, they have had four to five years of watching their own college professors. And we know often what kind of edu- what type of teaching methods college professors are using. And they also have 13 years of K-12 and watching those teachers. I mean, really, this career has the longest internship of any career they have been watching teachers for nearly 20 years and if those most of those teachers are not using technology and you walk into that first year classroom you go to what you know well and you're tiptoeing around it i'm gonna say it and i'll say say it it. it. i'll say it in the best way is well, one of my first assignments is to have, and this is a tech integration class, and people are mm-hmm. so mind blown that we don't talk about tech integration as much as they think we do. Um, they need to create a, a lesson. We do a jigsaw with with an article or something, and they make a lecture, and then they present a lecture, and then I go through sitting and doing all these lectures and I say, okay, now you can't do a lecture. You need to have it done by the next time we meet in class and you need to do it on your own time because you didn't do what the assignment was. It wasn't make a lecture. It was make a learning experience. And then we push it off to Flipgrid and I say, here's what my third graders nine years ago did for making introduction videos for topics. Mm -hmm. And they made game shows and raps and this and that and the other thing all unrequested. And I said, do that. Think about how you're going to engage people, because if you can do it on video, you can engage people in person. But if you can engage people in person, it doesn't mean you can record yourself and it just work because you all did lecture. Why did you do lecture? And they said, because we've been doing it since high school. I'm like, that's why. Mm. Yep. That's why. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love this question. Mm mm-hmm. And I, I am the only Canadian in the room, so I do have a, an opinion on this that is very contrary to American. So I, I'm right. I'm, I'm giving it. I'm ready. Uh, so as we're all aware, this pandemic has changed our lives in many ways. In thinking of our return to school, are you willing to give up rights to function as a society? So you know what I thought of? I, 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 I have it ready. I went looking for it. I hate. <laughs> I hate this quote 
screw Benjamin Franklin. Absolutely. I, I hate this quote. This quote has gotten you people into so much trouble over the last couple hundred years. I can't even, I can't even. It's, it's, you know, the, the, the people who are protesting, for example, social distancing would use this quote. They would, they would say, freedom you know you can't tell me to wear a mask you know it's 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 impeaching it's imposing on my you know my whatevers you know you you can't um you know you know there are obvious limitations to what governments can and should do now i and i'm not advocating for police states or like china you know regulations like i was in china and you know you drive under every bridge and there's a camera that shoots into the cars to see how many people are in the damn car. Like that, that's normal. And I'm not saying that that's, that that's what we're, that's what you should be going for, but you can't just like everything under the guise, like I can do whatever I want because you know, hell yeah, America and American stands for freedom. It's, it's, it's dangerous in some ways and it's getting you guys into, it's killing, it's killing people right now. It's killing people. People are dying because they don't know how to sit in their damn house and watch Netflix. Right. That's all you had to do. You had one job. You had one job. Stay home. Who cares about every one job? People stay home. And you're screwing it up. Totally. And not even like it's to stay inside. Like we just have to stay home. You can still be outside. Right. Oh my God. I'm so angry right now. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that gets me, I had this lady get up in my grill on Twitter this week. The, the thing that gets me is the scapegoats. Like the town that I live in, but um, according to the New York Times, or not the town I live in, but nearby, according to the New York Times, we are the we've got, had the highest jump in cases in the country in the most recent few weeks. And I have neighbors who have these parties every single weekend, and there is you know like ter- twenty to thirty people at these parties. And so I I you know said well this isn't helping. You know, the fact that they're having all of these parties with all these people in their yard. And this lady came at me and was, uh, I can't even, it makes me so angry even thinking about it. She um, was blaming another, a, a group of people who maybe have a different belief than her and who maybe practice a different religion than her, saying that it was their fault that our numbers were rising. And it's just like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> are you serious you're going to you're going to have a scapegoat for this okay it's just absolutely ridiculous so blows my mind oh man like everybody else has to follow the rules but you don't have to because you're white yeah well um listen any civilized society has to be willing to make sacrifices yes. that impose on their ability to do things exactly the way they wanted to for the good of the whole. Mm-hmm. And um, you have to be willing to do that. And in times of peril, in times of great need, that need becomes stronger. Um, I'll tell you, there are not many World War II vets hanging around right now, but please, like, I mean, the things that that those folks did, the families, not just the people who went overseas to, you know, literally run into bullets, Mm -hmm. but the people that, you know, the the mothers that that, you know, left their families to go work in the factories because no one was there anymore to make you know, food and equipment and everything, you know, you know, we have to, you you can't always just get everything you want exactly the way you want at any time that you want it and expect society to also operate and function in kind of a civilized way. Uh, 
you know, and I'm pretty like, as we know, I'm pretty left and like, and I believe in taxes and like, I I'll, I'll be the first to do like the taxes of the prices we pay for a civilized society and all of that, all of that fun lefty quote stuff. Um, but I mean, it's true. And I'll tell you, if, if there's never been a time that's demonstrated the need for a strong welfare state more, uh, I mean, please tell me when, um, because my God, we've never relied on our governments more than we're relying on them now. And you'll all take the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, and, and that's the problem. We are in a welfare state because we are sub. I mean, we, heck we're subsidizing the LA Lakers because you don't want them to go under apparently. And we're giving them money. Uh, you know, yeah. It's so frustrating and I'm not against subsidizing and I'm not against providing monies to the people, but you can't have it both ways. I mean, if you want to have a pure capitalistic society, then realize that you can't then be accepting the handouts, but you know, is, is, oh, but they are. Yeah, they are. And I don't understand that thinking, you know, and then a lot of them will go on Twitter and go, well, if you weren't a Trump supporter, you know, you probably shouldn't be cashing that check. And at the same time, I'm like, well, if you are a Trump supporter, you shouldn't be cashing that check because ultimately that's not capitalism. Mm -hmm. You know, that it, it is socialism and it's not a bad thing in times of trauma, like the Great Depression, recessions. We've historically given out subsidies to help small businesses survive so that that way they can keep paying their employees. Hey, hey Kelly, you wrote this question. Is this the way you thought this conversation was going to go? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how it would go, but, but, I, but I will say that, um, that when I listened to the podcast, I could tell in your voice that that was a question that you that you wanted here um just by the way that you said it and i thought it was very thought provoking because based on that article and this um and the students getting um their temperature taken if they were displaying symptoms prior to walking through the door and it was almost like a green light red light thing that they could go in if they didn't have temperature, you know, whatever that may be um so i just started thinking about that and thinking about okay if we go back um are, are we as as citizens willing to give up some of those rights? Like, you know, you get your forehead scanned or you, you know, whatever it may be. Are Dear we God, yeah, that's a... You've got to. You have yeah. to. Who cares? I mean, you have and, and, to. If, and if that means I don't get to watch my son play football this year, but if we don't have an audience, he can still have a football game, then yes, absolutely. Right. I mean, we have to accept that there are some things we can't do. I mean, there sure as hell were a lot of things that our grandparents couldn't do during World War II. Mm -hmm. I think this is pretty minor. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. In 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 China, uh, when you're in the mall, like in, in just like in a shopping mall, they have little kiosks um, that have like TV screens, and there's two people in uniforms. They're always scary looking um but they're they're looking at these screens and they're and the screens are are our temperature monitors this was there already they they do this everywhere everywhere you go that is in like a public place they are watching they are there are body heat monitors looking for sick people already i mean mm -hmm. it's pretty pretty normal and it's it's to be honest it, listen, listen, if you're, if you're, if you have a fever, please don't be around me. And if you're dumb enough to go out when you have a fever, then I want those people to stop you and tell you to go the hell home. Like, seriously, like, like that's their job is to keep other people safe. If you're too stupid that you can't, you know, control your inclination to go out to the mall and get a new shirt, you know, when you have the flu, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, just don't <laughs> watch TV for a couple of days, please. Be better. <laughs> That's the best part about being sick is that you can sit there and watch TV <laughs> and you don't feel guilty. 
Oh my god! And just like when we were kids, like everyone stayed home and watched The Price Is Right. Yeah. Like there we go. Let's do it again. Drew Carey's great. Is he though? <laughs> well, not as great now. Um, I really Parker do miss the call. Drew Carey show, though. That was a fun, was a fun time. <laughs> it really was. Uh, uh, I think okay. people are going to get up in arms about getting their temperature taken. Like they really need to analyze their um, <laughs> footprint online. If, if they would have any idea how much companies oh, are yeah. making every movement that they do, <laughs> that they should be up in arms about not getting yeah. their temperature taken. Oh, the cognitive dissonance yeah. is astounding mm -hmm. <laughs> right now. You know, the, the, you know, going right from the, the whole, like, we'll take your money, but you know, we hate the government, but we'll take the government's money when they're giving it to us to, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Like, um, you know, I, I was walking, I, I wrote this on Twitter cause it drove me crazy. I was walking through the grocery store the other day. <laughs> I, by the way, I used to love grocery shopping. It's like, it was like one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It's like Christmas every week you go and you buy new things and it's like, then you get to like consume them right away. It's grocery shopping is phenomenal um, for most people anyways. Um, and, and I, I hate grocery shopping now. I hate mm -hmm. it. So I, and it's mm -hmm. terrible and it's, and it's stressful. And so there's this dude in the butcher sort of area and he's wearing a mask and he's got gloves on and he's got a shirt like collar popped done up right up to his face right so he's like like wearing a like he's covered right and then he's walking around like poking all the meat like for tenderness or whatever the hell you poke meat for he's just like and he's and he's picking it up and he's looking at it and right right up to his face and then he's putting it down and then looking at the next one and putting it down and i'm just staring at him going dude really <laughs> oh people <laughs> but th this wasn't the butcher guy no <laughs> okay no, i thought you were talking about <laughs> no it was a customer customer <laughs> It would be much more fun though if the butcher was doing it. Yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> oh man. And I just I couldn't handle it. So I, I'm just staring at him and I wanted to look at the damn steaks, but that wasn't gonna after you touched every single one of them. You know, you need us to, I can ship you some steaks. Oh I've got plenty in the deep freeze. You know, it's you know it's funny. You you say that about the shopping. Um I, I, I'm, I'm the one that usually goes grocery shopping. There's these yeah. stores in Texas called HEB, and they have these little they have people that cook stuff in the middle. Mm. Like they, they'll make stuff like little pieces sure. of steak and yeah. sauces. And yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I miss them. They're not there. But, oh. you know, when you when you go get fruit, you know how I mean, I go get mangoes or something like that, and, and I'll, I'll touch them, seeing like, I'm like, mm. hey, I can't be doing that now. I got to like, it's almost like you touch it, you buy it kind of now. It's like, yes, I'm like, please. Oh man, I gotta like okay. Now I'm like eyeballing it. Mm, that one looks pretty close. Huh? <laughs> I'll take that one. And I've gotten lucky so far. I guess I'm getting good at picking mangoes with the, just by sight. But that's pretty but good. That, yeah. But that's like the answer to that. Quite like that's a a small little is, yeah. liberty that you had. That could you please just give yeah, that up like, for a couple months, please? That just, I don't have. I, no, that's like right. I think that's easily can everyone can do. No, no, they can't. Well, they clearly I think, can't. I, That's the problem. <laughs> I think the ability to do it, yes. Will they do it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. It's just like, don't touch everything. Like, <laughs> pick up the thing and put it in your damn cart and keep walking. I'm trying to get out of the grocery store. Like, I'm setting record times now for grocery yeah. shopping. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sweating by the time I leave because I'm going through the, the grocery store so fast. Like, I'm running, I'm practically sprinting through the grocery store. Um, just to get the hell out. For sure. Oh, Use an Apple Pay. You don't even have to touch anything. You just scan your phone and out. <laughs> Tons of people in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about my hot takes or, you know, raging about grocery stores, feel free to chime in. Um, because Lord knows we could use some relief from me at this moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we've got a first timer. Yay! Considering this is only time three, welcome. We can still call you a founding viewer. We have a couple first timers think today, just, I think. Yeah, Phil Pulley. Uh, I think this uh, is his first time. Oh, Phil's no, been here. Phil's been here. Has he? 
Yeah. Yes, he had. He's he he was uh, pulled up with a quotable. Oh tweet. right. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. The game board no. teacher or the board game teacher. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think this is Scott's That's first fun. time here. I don't know. I didn't pay attention to the chat last yeah. week. And Otter's. I know Otter's lurking because he's sending me eye messages. <laughs> <laughs> Otter, get on. Get on the switch. <laughs> okay. So. Um, what's this one here? Many educators are looking at completion over correction mm -hmm. in assignments. Mm. What are ways that we can harvest proof that learning? This is like this is like the Eric Kalens question, right? Where he's yes, and 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 it's funny because um, I remember an episode from when we were in Minnesota um, uh, with Angie Kaltoff. Where, where we were talking about educational robotics and and um, and I think that Eric actually would appreciate you know this as well this idea that um, you know we know that educational robotics is fun we know the kids enjoy them they they have fun with them they emotionally are attached to dash and dot and think mm -hmm. they're super cute and love their voices and laugh when they do um funny things we know all that you know we see it it's not hard you take videos um we watch um students do videos of you know them programming them you know um and and making kind of um dances and lights and all of this stuff and um i think that at this point now especially with things like educational robotics um, it's it's time that we, we need some efficacy studies. We need to actually know whether it's working, because if we we don't, um, we're wasting our time. You know, there's 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 having fun and being engaged. There's engaged, and then there's learning. And that was the point that Eric was trying to make in the podcast, right? There's there's engaging and learning are not like you mm -hmm. know learning something are not the same thing. You know, and just because you're interested in it and loving it and having fun doesn't mean you're learning anything. And right. so we need to. Um, so I think that that's kind of what he was talking about, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Any anyone have any other thoughts on that? Um, my thought is let's ask them. Let's actually ask the kids to explain what they're learning and reflections and and goal setting. Um, you know, sometimes when I see quotes like this of, you know, proof that learning is occurring, well, the proof that people are asking for is give me the numbers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be numbers. It can be narrative. It can be qualitative feedback. And sometimes the there's so much there that the numbers can't show, but that teacher narrative would be able to show or student narrative would be mm -hmm. able to show. And yeah, Yang Zhao talks a lot about it in his uh, technology book. Uh, what is it called? Um, Never have a human do a machine's job or whatever. Um, but one of the chapters that he writes is about how there is some stuff that kids are learning that really can't be measured and we can't say that learning and success are only things that we can measure with some numbers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Come on, anyone else? Our, Come this on, is let's where we go. take our quizzes and our things that we can grade by Google form and we don't put them in our grade book anymore. Yeah. Because they're Googleable and they're great and they're knowledge checks. And are they important to help us understand where the students are? Yes. And we say, please don't search your answers. Yeah. But then we understand that that happens. And Philip says in our, in our chat somewhere in here, mm -hmm. um, shift up those assignments on Bloom's taxonomy. Mm -hmm. If we are having things at a taxonomy level that is so low that it's recite oh, or rep mm -hmm. like these super simple cognitive tasks we're not really understanding if they learned it. We're understanding, did they memorize it? Right. And when we shift it up mm -hmm. in that taxonomy, we start shifting into things where we can't have a computer just spit out a grade, where we also aren't no longer grading on this like 
checkbox approach, but it has to be a rubric. There's a progression through every um, criteria point where a rubric does make sense. And you can't cheat your way through it. You can't. As a learner, it doesn't happen. You have to demonstrate. And does it take more time? Yeah. But do you do less of them? Yeah, you do less of them because they show more learning overall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that formative, that formative piece, keeping a pulse on where they are can't stop because you have less summative work. Com comment in the chat. I'm shocked when I ask high school students and they can't come up with ideas for games or new ideas for programs. We're too directive as teachers. What's, you know, it's funny. Um, I, I worked at a private school that was like super regimented and, and, and like do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. And then I show up and I'm like, I want you to make a game. Go. And they're like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, right. But they all know they and I say to them and then I have to like when they're lost, especially early on, they were like lost. And I'm like, you know what games are. You know how they work. You know what they do. You know how to play them. You know, you are game experts in mm -hmm. some ways, um, you know, and I've also taught you how to do the programming and all of the other things that you need. Mm -hmm. Um you know, but they needed me to like, they were seeking my like, do this, then do this, then do this. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. That's not we how I do them that. Always that there's one right answer for everything. Yeah. And so they are scared to think out of the box to give a different answer because they're, they're not used to being able to, to have a choice in how they express their learning or, or whatever it may be. And so like, I always um, have found that like our high potential kids or our, you know, perfectionist students, they have the hardest time with um, being able to have those open ended assignments because they're so afraid of failing and they want you to tell them there's one right answer and this is how you get there and then they can do it and then they're going to get an a um but if we have to start i mean training kids <laughs> there's not always yeah. just one right answer we need to yeah. allow them choice we need to allow them their their own voice and how they express their learning and we have to allow them failure where it's not going to hurt their grade because Absolutely. that's where it all comes back to is I need to know how to do this so I can get the A. Mm -hmm. You take the grade out of it and after a while they start to come around, but it's so ingrained in them. Mm -hmm. And it is those high, often those high achievers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about two is, you know, my daughter's in high school right now, so she's a sophomore and then she's like, um, you know, a couple years thinking about college. But I think also if you think about colleges are looking for, OK, you have to have this SAT score, you have to have this score. And so kids are like, well, I need to get the here. So uh, some some kids are I, I don't want to do all this. Stuff. I want give me what I need to do to get this done. And it's just because it's the way the whole system is set up. I think it's to the point where. Some, some, something's going to have to happen for it to switch. And, and this whole, um, what's going on right now with everyone learning from home, everything is switched. The traditional classroom is gone. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm doing training, helping teachers out and trying to shift the thinking. It's like, well, try to do this, you know, instead. But, you know, I want to give them the, the quiz. I'm like, well, okay. So here's like you're talking about Google form. Here's a Google form. We're going to do it that way. But like, think of creative ways, what you can do. I saw a kid today post an assignment. He, it was, he post, I think it was on Twitter. So the teacher did, and they did a whole little thing based on the 1917 movie that was out, like the one shot type of uh, shot. And the kid did it with his phone. I was like, man, that was pretty good. Just doing it, sitting at home, told a story. And I mean, it's like, you know, Oh, you, I, I, you got, you did it. That was it. And probably did a lot more work doing that than if he would have written an essay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. take the grade out and focus on the learning feedback and importance of trying again there mm -hmm. it is that's it. Yeah. that's it right there that's i think i feel like that's what we're all saying anyways uh pretty interesting uh yeah listen um what a world <laughs> it, it's boy oh boy i all i can i can hope all i can hope for is that you know, when we when we do go back to schools 
and things do kind of go back to normal and that might be a while um that we remember you know it's it's funny how quickly we we forget Mm -hmm. um things and and what things were like and what was happening and um but we've learned some things i think you know as a society even i i think certainly for example i think society has learned that teachers are priceless and that education is hard teaching kids is hard and uh schools are you know the safest place in some cases for your kids to be uh, you know in most places anyways um and it's like i just hope we remember all this because boy oh boy we've learned some things mm-hmm. um what are is anyone looking for we should end on a positive we have about five Ooh. minutes left and and um you know this is <laughs> these are so much fun i i'm always like really tired i start when i start this like i'm like I was yawning like every 30 seconds prior to us going live. <laughs> and it's like, um, but they're great. Um, but I'd love to hear, you know, how we're going to like, like, let's, let's talk about what's happening next week. Is anyone excited for anything? Ooh, for I'll start like, what well, you think yeah. I can give you something. So, so hashtag marketing. Um, but the but the but the Minecraft podcast is coming along nicely. The trailer is freaking awesome. It sounds so damn good. Um, so yeah, the Minecraft Education Edition podcast uh, with your host Mike Washburn is coming out very soon, uh, and Ooh. and we're really we're really excited about it. It's it's been a lot of work um, working working with Microsoft is exactly what you think um in all the good ways and bad ways um and yes hashtag yes. Marketing. uh <laughs> finally <laughs> otter. See, see i knew otter would appreciate Mr. that otter. uh and and so it's it's going it's going super well and it's gonna be great uh we also have like three other podcasts coming out on participate wow. uh soon so so there's so much going on the streams um i will also say that brad Schreffler's coding show uh starts on tuesdays Ooh. tuesday at one o'clock is brad treffler's first coding show on this channel right here so you should bookmark this and listen 13 people in the chat if you all aren't following twitch.tv slash inside participate you need to hit the heart button that's right at the top of the screen it's kind of over there um and and make sure you're following us a coding show yes a coding show a coding show yes a coding show uh, <laughs> where we will talk about coding uh it's gonna be great so who else is looking forward to stuff i just gave i you know i just did all the plugs uh so next week is our graduation week traditionally and there's so much that i'm going to miss because my graduation sponsor and i don't get to hug the kids this year but i am so excited that the parents organized a main street cruise where all of the graduates in their caps and gowns will line up the uh you know six to ten feet apart on main street so that the rest of the town can drive through main street honk wave you know maybe throw candy who who knows what will happen um but i have not seen some of those kids i've talked you know somehow communicated with them all but i haven't seen some of those kids since march so i'm really excited for that that's awesome that's exciting if no one else has anything, I got one more. I got, I got one. Um, I'm, do it, Claudio. I'm, do it, please. Hey, do hey. it. So uh, last week I started a live stream show as part of like on my YouTube channel. So um, next week will be the, the third episode. So I'm pretty excited about this. So I'm called Creators Lounge. So I'm just mm-hmm. connecting with people. I've, I got musician friends and looking for artists in the creative world, but also education world. We'll just talk about the creative process and what makes our mind tick like that. So I'm cool. having a lot of fun with that. So I'm looking forward to the next episode. That's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. <laughs> hey, I, I spent the last couple of days working on our guest list for the next couple of weeks. You want to hear who's coming on the podcast? In the yeah. next- Let's see our lineup. Oh, oh my God. So um, we have uh, Tacey, Tacey Trowbridge. 
uh, actually, Claudio would know who Tacy is. So Global Head of Education for Adobe is on the podcast next week on Monday, where we're interviewing on Monday. So next week's podcast, um, we have friends from uh, a company called Empatico um, mm-hmm. that, that do a lot of work with social emotional learning um, uh, on the on the podcast the week after that. Matt Miller, friend of the pod, Matt Miller on the podcast the week of the 20 week of the 25th. Uh, who else is coming up? Adam File coming up on. I've wanted Adam on the podcast for a long time. He's a good friend, um, and we've not been able to make it work. Coming up on the week of July eighth. Um, who else has confirmed? Jennifer Cassa Todd has confirmed week of June 29th. Um, Jennifer Cassa Todd. Who else do I got here? Uh, Michael Hernandez. Mm-hmm. Speaking of creatives, not uh, the Diamondback player. No, 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 the no. very, very talented, uh, you know, cinema, awesome, awesome photo- photography. The guy's a brilliant dude when it comes to teaching that stuff. Uh, coming up, uh, Noah Daniel mm-hmm. on July 20th, who I'm a, a big fan of, fellow Canadian, host of the P3 podcast that Glenn and I have both been on that get, made us incredibly nervous. Uh, the only podcast that actually I was nervous to be on um uh jake miller uh july 27th uh and the last one that i have confirmed micah shippy from ready learner one on august 3rd so we oh and actually just confirmed tonight john carippo from q nice august august 10th so what a lineup holy moly yeah so uh lots 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 to talk about and um friends this has been fun i enjoyed every second of it um and thanks to everyone who's watching we've had we had consistently uh, a lot of people watching the whole the whole time hopefully you come back and join us again uh, i'll promise to talk less um <laughs> just don't yeah. just don't, listen listen just don't make controversial questions <laughs> that that make me want to rant about politics good job and, kelly you did a great job. yeah yeah absolutely kelly. kelly's new tonight kelly's kelly. new <laughs> uh thanks everyone for joining us have a good night uh we'll talk to you soon bye all take care bye